This video is brought to you by Squarespace. The Donald Duck meet and greet. He's a staple of any Disney park vacation. Sure, you're gonna go meet Mickey Mouse, but you're gonna have a lot more fun meeting a short-tempered feathered friend. So you know what time it is. It's time to put on your Charles Darwin toe socks because it's time for another Distory Dad costume evolution. You know, because toes, like, you know, phalanges, Charles Darwin evolution, Disney Dan costume evolution. <laughs> it's time to find out how this duck really evolved. Plus, don't forget to check out our crazy adventures and behind the scenes fun over on our vlog, Please Stop Vlogging. There's a big video coming out next month and you're gonna wanna see everything behind the scenes about it, trust me. What's going on, Donald Duck fans? It's Dan here, back with another costume evolution. In fact, this is a remaster of Donald Fauntleroy Duck's evolution. Same great duck, all new ducky flavor. Donald Duck's first theatrical appearance was in the 1934 animated short, The Wise Little Hen. But it wasn't until his second appearance in The Orphan's Benefit where we saw the sailor's true color, a short, fused rage monster. Seriously, he literally pulls a brick out from behind his back at the end of the short, implying that he was about to beat infants with it. <laughs> That's unhinged. Donald Duck would go on to star in way more animated features than any other Disney character, literally becoming a hero during World War II. We love Donald Duck. We still do love Donald Duck. In fact, he's my third most watched costume evolution ever, but that video is five years old. So it's time to dip back into the duck pond and see what kind of new great stuff I've unearthed. Our first look at a costumed Donald Duck character came in 1937 at the red carpet premiere of Snow White. This costume was baggy and clumsy and had gigantic buttons. This huge bow, a really tiny hat. It essentially looked like a plush Donald Duck, like exploded to human size. But despite the odd accessories, I love the face sculpt of this costume. Look at that big distinct beak and those huge eyes. I would argue that they captured the look of Donald Duck better than the other two Mickey and Minnie monstrosities he's seen with in these photos. I just love the legs though. The legs are so wrinkly and thick. Why? Why? He's a bird. He's supposed to have bird legs. Why are his legs so thick? You're Donald Duck. You're not supposed to look like you're wearing pants at all. Donald Duck gets out of the shower every morning and puts a towel around his waist for not. Why aren't we talking more about this? <laughs> That's what we call it in our house when you wander around without any pants on Donald ducking. Starting in the late 1940s, Disney licensed their characters to the Ice Capades for various numbers, including Donald Duck for multiple shows. His first appearance was in the 1950 segment of the Ice Follies titled Walt Disney's Toy Shop. There's tons of pictures of this, including some good color photos. The whole gang is there. The skaters saw through the neck of this costume and their head was wrapped tight in white fabric. You can literally see the performer's big old stubby head in the neck of this duck costume. It's wild. But hey, vintage Donald Duck, least you forget, had a really long weird neck. Remember original Donald? He was weird looking, man. So having the performer's face in the neck honestly made sense. This Ice Follies, Ice Capades, Donald Duck is beautiful. The head sculpt really, really nails it. The gigantic beak is near perfect. His eyes have a really good focus considering that it's like on the top of someone's head. He's looking down and centered. I, I honestly love this Donald Duck. Now, um, w when he's out on the ice, it does look like a guy's just wearing a giant baseball hat. I mean, like from a distance, it just, don't, it just looks like a giant baseball helmet, but that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Because what's awesome about these baseball helmets and something I had had no idea about these original Ice Capades costumes where they were articulated. They could talk. Look at Donald, he's talking. The opening of Disneyland in 1955 saw all kinds of interesting characters wander the streets of Disneyland, including an entire host of costumes originally made for the ice, now featured on the asphalt. You guys know the story. Walt didn't plan ahead, needed costumes last minute, and called up the Ice Capades to get all of those licensed characters into his park for opening day. And while some of these costumes worked great on the ice, uh, they were not great, uh, just, you know, shaking their hands on the curb. <laughs> 
These things were not meant for intimate meet and greets. There's that infamous color photo of all the tired performers post parade with that, <laughs> with that poor, poor, I would assume tiny woman dressed as Donald Duck, just standing there frozen in time, stoically, miserable, tired, <laughs> with a unconscious Dumbo behind him. It's an incredible photo. It's one of my favorite photos of all Disneyland history. I love it so much. This costume was designed to be viewed from like arena stadium seating where people are looking down at it. Now that people are looking up at it, they're just staring at an out of breath uh, performer breathing through the white fabric of Donald's neck, <laughs> huffing and puffing. It was the 1960s that brought about Disneyland's first official Disney Park Donald Duck. Throughout the late 1950s and 60s, Donald was surprisingly absent in a variety of shows throughout Disneyland. We come through a lot of vintage footage only to discover Goofy, Pluto, Mickey, and almost every other character, but no Donald. Well, that's because a lot of his appearances occurred during the Fantasy on Parade, where he was this kind of go-kart mini float. It was this completely hard shell mold Donald stuck to this makeshift Mr. Toad's wild ride car with Huey, Dewey, and Louie uh, along for the ride. This is a wild parade float and there's like a, there's a man inside there. There's like a human man in there, uh, sweating. But the costume did debut as a walk around character sometime in the late 1960s. The costume had a much fuller body with a potato sack duck butt. Like they could not figure out this duck's butt costume wise for decades. Uh, but they had, it had nice padding it, like in a wider bottom and big wide plastic shoes. I actually kind of like the feet on this uh, Donald. It's, it's, it's creative. It's way better than the, the fabric flaps they had for the ice capades. <laughs> it's nice to see a molded duck foot. I wish I could, like, why don't they sell these? Like, I, I, like, it, like, give me character shoe stores in the parks. I would definitely wear Donald feet around. Sure, 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 I'd break my neck, but I'd look cool doing it. And throughout the 1960s and 70s, this costume was featured in the Disney On Parade show, a traveling arena spectacular, which featured a variety of characters that kids could meet up close. It was kind of like Disney on ice, but without the ice. They even had this alternative head design with a much more thicker and flexible bill that would bounce up and down, giving Donald some form of articulation. And at one point, Donald was even partially eaten by Herbie the Love Bug. Here's a fun fact, Herbie had teeth. You don't see that in any Euro Transformers movies. <laughs> Optimus Prime with dentures. These eyes on this costume are chaotic. They range between having thin black outlines to incredibly thick black outlines. The lenses were routinely changed and, and his eye focus goes all over the place. This is one chaotic Donald costume. They were really trying to figure it out. This was their first attempt at it and uh, things were weird at first. The standout for this version of Donald can be seen in his lack of buttons. His jacket doesn't have any buttons. It has the signature bow. It has that white outline on the sleeves and the collar. It looks like a sailor's outfit, but it's missing the Donald buttons. And in fact, this is a good way to track Donald costumes because the buttons vary from decade to decade. Donald got a complete redesign in the late 1970s with a whole new body and sailor uniform. They did, however, reuse the same mold for the head and bill. This is a good time to actually talk about the visibility of the performer inside of this costume, because sure, they can see out of the eyes depending on the placement and how they're positioned, but where the performer got a lot of their viewpoints is actually inside the duck beak of Donald. There's this little vision hole inside the mouth that allowed the performer to look down at the children underneath this otherwise massive, like a uh, visual barrier that is a Donald duck beak. The pupils, the black part in the middle of the eye kind of operate like sunglasses where it's like a, a polished black material on the outside that you really can't see through, but for the people inside the head, they can see out and have a ton of visibility. The belly of Donald now is much rounder. He's a much rounder, more welcoming duck. And now his sailor uniform has four big white buttons on it. And it's a shinier material. This is a fun duck. This is a, this is a vibey 70s duck. He's having a great time. In fact, we love this Donald duck mold and design so much. We kept him in the park for decades. This Donald stuck around until the mid nineties. That's how much use we got out of this beautiful Donald design. 
design. I love, I love, love, love how they tweaked the head to really nail the look. The eyes, the aligning around the eyes, the beak, the plush of the fur, everything was really perfect with this Donald and he stuck around and was used for decades. Until we got the 1995 cartoon Donald Duck costume. This was a entire remodel of the costume that took it in a completely different direction than we previously saw Donald, or for that matter, really any character in the parks. This is truly one of the Fab Five trying to be visualized as a cartoon character. His eyes have become bright blue. His entire color palette has been shifted up into this like almost powdered baby blue look. It's crazy. They even did it to Daisy Duck. They gave her blue eyes and, and crazy pastel outfits too. This was uh, such a choice and no one liked it and it did not last in the parks very long. The costume just got smaller. It got weird. The head got smaller, the body got smaller, and things changed to the eyes, not just in the color, but now he has furry eyelids, which was uh, kind of an interesting choice. You know what this Donald Duck costume looks like weirdly? It looks like the Howard the Duck costume. Not, not the Guardians, Howard. I'm talking about the weird 80s Howard the Duck. Uh, th that chaos duck that wandered around for a minute. <laughs> This is giving me all of that energy. I don't know. I really don't like this Donald Duck very much at all. It's it's too it's too cutesy. It's too cutesified. It looks like Donald Duck from like Disney Junior and not like actual Donald Duck from the cartoons. Finally, in the early 2000s, we settled on a Donald Duck look that is mwah, perfection. This is all Papa could ask for. Look at this Donald Duck. It is iconic. It's the Donald Duck that we have to this very day. And there are all kinds of subtle changes that make this look fantastic. First and most foremost, his eyes. They did something very interesting with his eyes. Now, finally, for the first time, they settled them down into the beak. They're no longer complete ovals. Now they're kind of cut off a little bit by the beak of Donald and tighter together over the beak. And that gives a much, much more friendlier face. His eye line is now way more focused for character interactions and everything is a lot tighter. And we go back to that royal blue sailor outfit look. Now, I don't, I don't know what we were trying to do with that powdered blue look. I'm so glad we went back to this. And the jacket was shortened a little bit, so we got a little bit more belly. Hey, I love Donald Duck in a belly shirt, all right? <laughs> if he's not gonna wear pants, let's embrace it. There is a little bit of a hint of blue in his eye now, a bit of a holdover from that last look. And honestly, I don't mind it. I don't mind like a, a, a light hint of blue in the eye, but uh, I didn't need it to be a hard blue like it was last time. Honestly, he's perfection. I love his, his belly. I love his little duck belly and butt in the modern costume. It's so low, it's, it's practically hovering over the knees of the performer inside the costume. That's how low the belly is on this thing. But that's great, it's like it stretches out the body of the duck and makes it uh, such a fun illusion. They got tricky with the duck build for the modern Donald. Previously, all of his duck mouths have just kind of been these flat protruding bills, but now he has a little bit of a curvature to his mouth. He's kind of grinning. He looks like he's like happy in all of his photos. And that's some very, very tricky sculpting to make work perfectly and they nailed it here. Now, everyone knows and loves him. It's time for that sassy articulated Donald Duck. In 2004, the castle show at the Magic Kingdom got all kinds of articulated characters, and this had a little bit of a change in the aesthetic of the costume, specifically in the plush of the fur used for Donald. Donald is way fuzzier than any other version in this articulated form, and it's because the head and all the operating mechanics need lots of room and movement, and all of that plush fur helps fill in the space when all that, when the mouth and jaw and eyelids are opening and closing. If it was a short plush fur that we had on the normal walk around, you'd see a lot more moving on the head as it was talking. I love photos of this Donald Duck. People catch this Donald doing the wackiest things. I love half closed eye Donald because it looks like he is just completely doubting anything I have to say. I love it, I love it, I love it. Give me sassy opinionated Donald any day.
This articulated Donald appears in any kind of stage show where you see Donald talking. From the Christmas stage show all the way through to the daily shows that they do in front of the castle, the Friendship Fantasy Fair, this is the Donald that you see anytime he's articulated. Now, dovetailing off of this super smart Donald head, in 2017, they rolled out a free roaming interactive Donald Duck for a play test at Disneyland. And oh my gosh, look at this. What is going on? You could just walk up to Donald Mickey and Minnie and have a conversation with the three of them and there's no there's no cameras or two-way mirrors or or cast members helping behind the scenes it's just those three performers interacting with you and that is wild I despise that they got rid of articulated Donald that you could meet in the parks. It was ahead of its time. Maybe one day Talking Donald will come back to a, a meet and greet opportunities in the park. Uh, but it was quite a, a quite a thing to see. I would have loved the opportunity to talk to him, but he was literally in the park for hours. Just like hours, not even days. But very soon, we'll be diving into all of these sneaky, speaky secrets that these costume characters have. So keep your eye out on the channel. Did you know that Donald Duck is the mascot for the University of Oregon, or at least was until 2010? I, in my research for this video, uncovered truly the most insane story I've ever read when it comes to Disney character licensing, and it involves Walt Disney, a duck named Puddles, unofficial handshakes, and a mascot getting into a fist fight. So, um, if you want to hear that story, it requires its own separate video, so leave a comment hashtag Donald Duck throws down. Can you do a duck impression? Can you do the Donald thing? You gotta lay your tongue really flat across the roof of your mouth and try to like isolate the sound into your cheeks. <laughs> My grandfather could do it all growing up. And so I, but I can't, I don't have it perfected like the Donald, but I could kind of do it. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Donald Duck doesn't wear pants, but you know what he does wear? Shirts. And you can get shirts at Chuckle Kingdom, a new website I've designed thanks to my friends at squarespace.com. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all in one easy-to-use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with fully integrated commenting systems that support threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Oh, what, what's this? What's this shirt I've been wearing the entire episode? What's that? Is it a fine piece of merchandise from chucklekingdom.com? Head over there now and pick it up. This park is ballin', y'all. You all love going to Epcot to meet Mexican Donald. So wear this shirt the next time you go. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Well, there you go. There's the remaster of the fine feathered friend that is Donald Duck. I love this duck. I love him so much. I love how angry he is. I love how impulsive he is. He's all of us. We all have a little bit of Donald Duck inside of us. So head out onto the social media channels where you can find me across all of them and share with me your photos and stories and tales of the times that you have met Donald Duck out in the wild or any duck in the wild, really. I don't know. Send me photos of any duck you might have seen. I'll take them. Kenny loves photos of ducks. He's an animal lover. Send Kenny all of your duck photos. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for taking the journey with us through this duck pond of history. As always, you rock. As soon as you say toe socks, you feel it between your toes. It just, it's like, it's like, <laughs> you just become consciously aware of the space between your toes. No, no, no. If you tell someone you're Winnie the Poohing in the living room, they're going to be like, you're doing what? <laughs>
I hope you put a towel down. 